We can complete the shader with only one more line of code and have it behave perfectly. We know that it doesn't matter what order the vertex color meshes are rendered with re relevant to each other, but we need to avoid other opaque geometry from interfering, as unless it is rendered before all of our transparent objects, our result results will be unpredictable and usually incorrect. So that line is tags and then in curly braces, Q equals transparent. So let's see what that looks like. We now have a scene with all three of these meshes using that shader. And we're forcing each of these meshes to be rendered now after the plane in the background. So why does that happen? Well, we can learn more about rendering cues on the Shader Lab page that is entitled Shader Lab uh, Subshader Tags. It's called subshader tags because your entire subshader must fit into what's known as a rendering queue. And the predefined rendering queues are background and geometry. Geometry is what this plane is rendering in. Then we have the transparent queue, which all of these meshes are rendering in. There's also overlay, which would render after these meshes. We can see what queue you're using in a shader by uh, going to the inspector after clicking on a shader and looking at render queue. So we see that this is 3000 and the black shader is 2000. 2000 is geometry, that's the default and what you'll be using most in Unity and uh, what most opaque objects will use. So a higher number will render after a lower number. So let's go back to one of the earlier problem scenes we were looking at where we have things not working as expected. So I actually manufactured this result because it's ambiguous within a queue what order the meshes are going to render in. Now a late, everything in a, late, in a later queue is grouped, so it will render after objects in an earlier queue, but again, within any rendering queue, every mesh and every triangle within those meshes will be uh, rendered in a random order that you cannot predict. Each of the meshes in this scene utilizes a different shader. Um, you could use the same shader for each of these meshes and potentially get the result we're actually seeing here. However, it would be unpredictable and it doesn't lend itself well to making a tutorial because every time I'd come back to Unity, it might be rendering slightly differently because within the same rendering queue, the order of the meshes rendering, again, is ambiguous. You cannot predict that. So first I wanted to make sure that we had the uh, black black background rendering first. So all we did was use pass and some closed braces and tags Q equals background. Then I wanted to make sure that we had something that was going to block out something behind it as well as blend with what was in front of it. So I then used something in not the geometry queue but geometry queue minus one. Something that would that would render before anything in the geometry queue. Now when you're using the built-in queues, you do not need to use quotation marks. However, if you're going to use anything but that, you actually have to wrap the word queue in quotation marks and you then need to use quotation marks around whatever is coming after the equal sign. And you can use, um, you can actually not use anything whatsoever and that will also work, but why put quotation marks in if you don't need to? So only when you're adding or subtracting something from these uh, cues should you bother with the quotation marks, in my opinion. Um, so you can do anything up to a thousand. If you were actually if you were actually going to use geometry minus a thousand, that would be the same thing as using background. So uh, base it around you know 500 plus or minus whatever whatever cue you're going to be uh, wanting to base base it on. So something that's going to be okay, opaque, you know, try to base it around geometry, something that's going to be transparent or uh, something that's going to be really high up on screen, some sort of GUI. Base that on overlay. So again, this is geometry minus one and it's blending into the background or blending into what's already on screen, but what is already on screen is just this black plane. Then we are going to have this in front and we know this is coming after after this because it's blending the after the mesh in the middle because we see that it's additively blending but we know that's coming before what's in the background because 
it's occluding what's in the background. Remember, th there is no Z right off in this particular um, example. So this mesh is just utilizing geometry, and so we don't need to have a tag at all. And finally, the one in the background is using the overlay queue.